Hi, it's Chrissy here again for part three of reintegration with military children. So a lot of us enjoy watching those uh, homecoming videos that you see on YouTube or some of the morning shows where service member pops out of a box in front of a school event or uh, the child is surprised um, during with a service member that was hidden in a closet all of those kind of videos and we cry and it's, it's so sweet. What I want to um, let you know of is the reaction of the child overcome with joy, hugging and, and squeezing the service member, feeling a very um, wonderful rush of excitement. You're really looking at one age group and that's the six to 12 year olds, okay? Excited, talkative, maybe quiet but reserved. We can expect that generally in the six to 12 age group, but if you have a child who's an infant or a three to five year old, expect that their reaction might be different than you see in those videos of the six to 12 year olds. If you have a teenager, their reactions are going to be different as well. Some teenagers might experience um, a change in behavior. They might be acting too cool to show any emotion. They might not want to show emotion in front of anyone. They might feel more comfortable expressing emotion with a service member or only with their parents or only um, in their household, not with other people. Um, infant to two-year-olds, they might be, um, cry, they might cry, they might fuss, um, they might be shy, clingy to their caregiver or clingy to the service member if they have um, some affection for them at that time. Um, and they may not recognize the parent, which is a bummer. But that's the initial reaction. That's not the forever reaction, okay? It's just the same as if you have ever had a child and you see them um, see a grandparent that they haven't seen in a, in a while or someone else that's been a part of their life but, but has been uh, away or they haven't seen for a period of time. There is a warm-up process with, um, with that child. So the three to five-year-old sometimes needs time to warm up. Um, they might actually even express over a video call or over, um, or they might have been telling the caregiver for a period of time, I am so excited to see dad or mom. I can't wait. I'm going to go and give them a big hug. And then when lights are on and people pull out their phones, the reaction's different. And that's just because the child um, is in an age bracket where they don't necessarily always adhere to people's expectations. So they might seek attention and they might actually want attention in negative ways, so look for that as well. Um, they might want to monopolize the service member's attention for a period of time. And, or they might also need um, some kind of proof that, that they're actually there. Um, I, I wasn't a child when video chat was a thing, but um, children sometimes have a little bit, they don't necessarily always under, understand object permanence, like this is an object, this is here and it goes away and it still exists and now it's back. Um, so realize that your child might process things a little bit differently. Get down on their level in their eyes and see how they are, um, how they might be perceiving things and ask a lot of questions, okay? So encourage if you haven't already and the service member has been, you know, because we also uh, work with service members who will be unable to communicate with children for a period of time, okay? Um, encourage that service member to send those messages before homecoming and then after during the reintegration process we want to adhere to these tips. So go slowly, encourage the service member to kind of take gradual steps, um, let them know how much they miss them, let them know all the thing, wonderful things they had to say about mom or dad while they were gone. Um, let them encourage them to get involved so i remind and this is particularly for service members who have younger children i like to remind them to pick a time during the child's uh, regular routine where they are happy normally so if your child likes to take walks in their stroller and they're usually happy in their stroller put the service member in that part of the routine for my child, my first son, he really enjoyed bath time, always was happy in the bath, could stay in the bath for a long period of time. And it was a good idea for me to involve his father, our service member, 
into that routine because it wasn't something that I always had to be there for. So I wasn't always having to take the crying baby or the crying toddler. That was where dad was implemented as a part of the regular routine, okay? Um, you wanna <laughs> encourage open communication. So that also means allowing that child to express feelings of anger, sadness, disappointment, fear, okay? And realize that emotions are just signals and they are not always bad, okay? Adults have those emotions as well. So you have to allow for some safe space of the child's sharing of emotions in that area too. Um, the service member should not come home and immediately be a disciplinarian. Let the service member, you as caregivers or as uh, parents back at home, let them know what discipline has looked like. Let them know the concerns and the ways that you typically discipline. And then once they have had time to observe, uh, observe discipline within the house, encourage them to take an active part in that. And the child will probably resist at, at first. So just be prepared for that. Um, but it's a good, it, we cannot have a situation where only, if you're in a two parent household, only one parent disciplines. Or if you're in a multi-family situation where, um, where, other adults who are caregivers are not offering, implementing the same discipline across the board. It's important for the child for, uh, for those rules to be um, standard across their caregivers. Um, you wanna make sure you help and you wanna make sure you get help if things feel a little bit like you've gone past the six week period or you feel like things are just too rocky, they're too contentious at the time, the child doesn't seem to be adjusting well, um, they're showing maybe some regression um, that has been going for a period of time. Also realize that during a time of global pandemic, children are disrupted in their routines. They are not able to see their friends regularly. Um, we are having, in our house for example, we're having the talk about not being able to attend summer camps, which is a big disappointment for my children. We're not able to go on our regular vacations. So. Realize that we're all going through periods of adjustment and um, being uncomfortable, um, but think about some other ways that you can implement some fun activities instead of just no, 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 can't, can't. Let's think about some other ways that maybe we can experience something that's fun or unique or different. I had a colleague that just said, you know, we haven't been able to go to a movie in eight weeks, um, so we're gonna go check out the drive-in movie because that's, that should be safe for us to experience a drive-in movie together. So think about some of the ways that you can still have fun, still enjoy the summer, still celebrate homecoming and reintegration, um, but still say, stay safe. All right, I'll be back for a session on blended families. Bye.